Six uh, swore was even more explicit. David Clark. Thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, I'm very pleased to take a call at this point, um, as I've uh, had the opportunity in the previous debate, but I, I think it's important to come back to the context for starters, because we're talking here about a government that's failing. It's failing in respect of having the worst economic growth record of any government in 50 years. There are 50,000 New Zealanders leaving annually for Australia, and there has been a 50 per cent increase in unemployment, and there are now nearly 50,000 more people on benefits. And that is because this government will not tackle the big issues. And this part of the bill is another illustration of that. This part of the bill has more tinkering, Mr Chair. We have here some positive streamlining. That's the best thing we can find in this bill. We can find no pro-growth tax policy. We can find no R&D policy. We can find no savings policy in this part of the bill. And there is no changes to monetary policy, of course. This is a government that is failing. And I want to question uh, whether the government can actually implement the changes, and, I, and I'd be interested if the Minister and the Chair would like to take a call on this, whether the government can actually implement the changes that it is proposing here in respect of electronic transactions. And I raise the question because it's not so long ago, uh, well, it's actually over six months ago now that John Key made his Valentine's promise. And John Key's Valentine's promise on February the 14th of this year was to address the problems with the IRD computing system. The IRD computing system is not up to scratch. We know that. The IRD has been saying it for a very long time. And we know that tax policy is being held up because computer systems, and I'm quoting the Prime Minister here, can't actually support radical changes from government. And the Prime Minister, on Valentine's Day, said, you don't want to be in a position where Parliament is held hostage to a lack of technology. That's what the Prime Minister said. He told reporters that he didn't want to be held hostage to a lack of technology. Well, he is. He is held uh, hostage at this stage because they have not addressed, this government has not addressed the IRD computer system, a computer system that was designed in 1992 and apparently will cost $1 billion, somewhere between $1 billion and $1.5 billion to replace. Now, I find that number implausible in and of itself. It's, it's hard to believe that our computer system could cost that much to replace. We're not the only country in the Western world that has a tax system. We haven't seen a plan yet from this government as to how it's going to address these problems. So how on earth can they convincingly say, Mr Chair, that they are going to implement even something like electronic filing? The electronic filing here listed uh, retains, I notice, uh, paper copies as well. And I think that is probably because the government is a bit nervous about whether these electronic transactions will really work. So I'd be interested if the Minister and the Chair can express some confidence in the ability of the IRD to deliver these changes. And, and the other thing that's happening, of course, as this computer system uh, struggles through, is that the IRD is, is preparing for this new world, but customer satisfaction levels are dropping. They're laying off staff around the country. Uh, it's 42 people in the last four years uh, down my way, and they continue to have dropping satisfaction because everything's going online. Uh, or everything's going on the phone. It's actually hard to find somebody if you've got a tax issue these days who will service your needs. That we poll as taxpayers pay for the system, but our service is not being met that we need. Well, there are advantages in having electronic returns, so I congratulate the government on uh, recognising this at last. And um, I guess one of the advantages of being able to uh, put in electronic returns is that uh, you can put them in more immediately. You can write them up straight away. If you're carrying around uh, an iPhone or a, an iPad, you can, you can write up, I assume, your electronic return straight away. Or well, that will be a provision, I hope, if the Minister might like to explain that as well, how immediate it is. But I assume those, those forms will be online. You'll be able to start filling them out. And if you are somebody that suffers perhaps from memory loss, you know, if that's an issue that, that somebody struggles with, they could, I mean, you couldn't bank on it, my, my colleague says, but, but I, I hope that it is true that this will facilitate uh, an easier filing of returns for people who struggle with a variety of issues, not just memory loss. I was thinking about this as I flew up from uh, the electorate uh, of Dunedin today, Dunedin North, the fine electorate that I represent, um, in, a, in an aeroplane. Um, it was an aeroplane, yes, that's right, it wasn't a, a helicopter, and I do remember that very, very well. 
uh, I was thinking about the advantages of electronic returns. Now, the other thing um, that we're seeing as these computer systems, Mr. Chair, Mr. David Chair, Clark. the other thing we're seeing as these computer systems struggle is that a, no a range of other problems are starting to uh, impact on the department. Uh, we had 70,000 calls uh, not answered in the lead up to the last filing date. We have hundreds, 70,000 calls unanswered. 70,000 calls. I'm sure it's not 50,000, uh, Mr. Fafoy. It's uh, 70,000 calls. Now, and I do remember, I do remember, uh, we have hundreds of thousands of unprocessed returns. Hundreds of thousands of unprocessed returns in that department. And, you know, we, we, I'm sure we'll hear more from my colleagues about returns. Uh, we have a system that falls over at crucial times and that was declared by the IRD to be on its last legs in many of its past uh, briefings to incoming ministers. And we have no plan but only talk of a $1 billion rebuild. We're not, as I say, the only country in the Western world with a tax system. The other uh, point I would like the minister perhaps to uh, address is the rumours that are swirling around about the rebuild of this computer system that will presumably be the computer system that files these electronic returns. Uh, and there, there is a rumour floating around that there is a 1,700-page draft report a 1,700-page draft report on repairing this computer system. Now, we've seen no action from the government. There's certainly been no public announcement of a plan. It's called a manual. Yes, it is. But, but we've seen, we've seen no, no, um, no public announcement. We've seen no commitment. And I wonder whether even the 1,700-page draft report, if it exists, suggests what the next steps might be. Perhaps another draft report. There's some consultants doing very well out of this. Uh, my colleague... Uh, Mr Chris Hipkins pointed out just how well the consultants there are doing not so long ago. Um, after pointing out that a million clients hung up before their calls were answered last year, uh, Mr, Mr Hipkins drew attention to the more than $125 million that has been spent in the IRD on consultants and contractors. That is unbelievable for a falling level of service that the public of New Zealand are getting sick of, and that is, that is simply uh, not able to make the big tax changes that we would like to see, the capital gains taxes, the research and development tax credits, the things that would actually make our economy work rather than these smoothing gestures that we find, the rats and mice, that we find in part three of this bill. Um, I, I notice also that uh, clause 131 uh, notes that a taxpayer may apply for financial relief, um, and that, that financial relief uh, in face of hardship paying tax is another sensible clause in this budget. So the kind of tinkering that's in here, most of it we don't object to. We just think that the really big changes could be addressed. Who knows, the financial relief might be uh, useful for somebody who's filed a false tax return, who's then uh, forced to repay some money, and is uh, then, paying, whilst paying their debts to society, is scratching around for some extra dough. Um, so the clauses that are in this bill do seem sensible. Unfortunately, they're only tinkering, Mr Chair, and they do not get to the heart of the issue. They do not address the real problems in our economy, the big problems that the national government will not address because it is, uh, doesn't seem to have the wherewithal to address those things which would make our economy function properly. Thank you, Mr Chair. Sue Moroni. Thank you, Mr Chair. Thank you. Um, I think in order to understand the importance of part three of this act, of uh, this bill, I actually want to get members of the public